I want to talk today about living with purpose in uncertain times. We are facing this virus that has been um, affecting our country in so many different ways, uh, threatening the lives of the most vulnerable among us. And then with that, there's the impact on the economy, on relationships, on mental health. And then on top of that, there's the uncertainty that it's brought the uncertainty of what's going to happen, what will society look like, what's going to happen to our lives. And as I've thought about this situation, we're facing the uncertainty with it. And then on top of that, as the light's been shone on racial injustice in our societies, I've been drawn to this passage in the book of Esther, this book in the Old Testament that tells of a young Jewish girl who is an immigrant in the Persian Empire, who becomes queen, and then she is confronted with this terrible racial injustice, the threat to life of all the Jewish people in the Persian Empire. And in Esther chapter four, we read about how Mordecai, Esther's cousin, sends a message to Esther, saying that she must go to the king to stop this terrible annihilation of the Jews from happening. And this is what happened. He, uh, Mordecai sends a messenger, Hathak, to Esther to tell her to go to the king. And then this is what she says. She instructed Hathak to go back to Mordecai and say, all the king's officials and the people of the royal provinces know that for any man or woman who approaches the king in the inner court without being summoned, the king has but one law, that they be put to death unless the king extends the gold scepter to them and spares their lives. But 30 days have passed since I was called to go to the king. When Esther's words were reported to Mordecai, he sent back this answer. And do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai. Go gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my attendants will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went away and carried out all of Esther's instructions. Who knows? Mordecai says to Esther, who knows but that you have come to this position for such a time as this? Who knows seems to be the phrase for this particular time. Who knows what's going to happen? Who knows what we should be doing? And the uncertainty at this time can be paralyzing. We can feel like we don't know what to do and so we are left acting in no ways. We become passive. But the extraordinary thing with Esther is that she responds to this who knows, this question and this maybe with great courage and great resolve. It's totally uncertain and yet she acts with purpose. So many other places in the Old Testament, people receive their calling from God with something very clear, an angel or a clear voice or a burning bush. But for Esther, there's nothing like this. God is not even mentioned in the whole book. He is hidden and invisible. And yet Esther within this context of uncertainty acts with great courage and does extraordinary things. And she does this by doing two things. First of all, she assumes that she's in the place where God means her to be. Mordecai says, who knows, but that you have come to this position for this time. It can be so easy to feel like maybe we should be somewhere else. During lockdown, Tara and I and our children, we were in Hong Kong with Jackie Pullinger's organization. 
And during those weeks where the UK was going through this extraordinary experience, many times we thought, are we in the right place? Should we be back in the UK? And then when we got back to the UK at the beginning of early June, I've often thought to myself, well, I wonder whether I should be back in Hong Kong. And it's easy to feel like maybe we should be somewhere else or at another time. I think for most of my life, I've wondered whether I'd be better suited to another time, certainly before social media uh, or the internet or computers or phones, basically the mid 19th century. But I've been trying to believe, to have confidence that God has put me where I am for this time for a reason not to try and be somewhere else or be it in some other age, but to be present and to live with purpose in the place that I find myself until God calls me somewhere else. And to assume that you're in the place that where God means you to be. And then to connect yourself to the problems you see. When Mordecai speaks to Esther, he says some things that seem very harsh, that her life is just as much at risk as anyone else's. And what he's trying to do is he's trying to say to her that these problems are her problems too. It might have been easy for Esther to think that no one knows that she's a Jew and she's the queen, she's married to the king. Surely she's safe. But Mordecai wants her to believe that these things are her problems too, and that's what she takes on. The problems we see in the world, the injustices we see, the poverty, the suffering we see in the world, these are our problems. They are not irrelevant to us. We need to connect with the problems we see in the world. And when we do that, two things happen. First of all, God draws out of us the things that we maybe didn't know were there within us in the first place. I've been doing for the last few years an exercise app called Freeletics. And very happily over the last few years, I've been doing these different exercises that the app sends me, these workouts. But then just recently, a friend of mine who I work with, Chris Green, started doing the same app and started doing the same workouts. And suddenly I'd find myself, find that he'd send me text messages telling me how he'd beaten my personal best for these different workouts. And um, obviously this was uh, very uh, painful, why he, he felt it necessary to gloat over me. And I found it so, myself something new emerging from me. And I started going back to these exercises with a new resolve and actually just earlier today, I did one of these uh, workouts and I thought I'd been doing my best in the past but something new emerged from me and I beat not only my personal best but Chris's personal best by a good 36 seconds. But instead of gloating about it or making this public, I've decided not to tell anyone about this. I've decided to keep this a secret. Unlike Chris who likes to gloat about these things, I'm going to keep this a secret. When we're faced with extraordinary circumstances and very difficult circumstances, sometimes God uses these times to bring up new things, to bring out new things from within us. And we see this with Esther. Up till now, she has been operating by concealing her identity, working with the system. And she is known for her beauty and for her modesty. And basically she does what the men around her tell her to do. But now there is a change. The injustice that she feels, the injustice she sees, the compassion that she feels brings out of her something new. She moves from being passive to being active. She moves from just going along with the system to confronting the system. She moves from concealing her race to acknowledging her race. And instead of doing what the men around her tells her to do, there is a change and suddenly she takes the lead. She starts to instruct and to confront and to challenge the men who are around her. God brings something new out of her. And I think a lot of people are discovering this in this time that these extraordinary circumstances that we're facing, God is bringing out of us, drawing out of us, things we never knew were there. 
And for Esther, it would also bring out this extraordinary self-sacrifice. Because in order to save the lives of the Jews, she would have to risk her own life. And this is what we see in the life of Jesus. He lays down his life in order that we might have life. He takes on sin in order that we might be forgiven. He is disgraced in order that we might receive grace. And this then becomes the model for our lives. There is no way to confront injustice or to live compassionately or to fulfill God's purpose for our lives without laying down our lives. And God enables us to do this. God draws out things that we never knew were there. And then he equips us. What will happen later on this story is Esther will go to the king. And the king has this edict that allows for the destruction of the Jews. And he will not remove this edict. Instead, he issues a new one that will give the Jews the ability to fight back. And this is how God so often works. We sometimes pray that God will remove the problems from our lives, the illnesses, the stresses, the problems we face. But, and sometimes God does remove these things. But more often, I think, God gives us instead the resources to fight these things, to face them, to confront them, to overcome them. And this is what I believe that God is doing for us at this time. We may want God to remove the uncertainty from our lives. But instead, I think God is giving us the resources to live obediently and faithfully within the uncertainty. Because God alone is the certain one. He is our rock and our redeemer. He is the eternal one. We have with us and within us the one who is totally certain, who certainly loves us, who certainly directs us, and who certainly works through us in extraordinary ways. Shall we pray? Our Father, thank you for your eternal and certain love for us, that we can rely on your love, on your grace, on your salvation in these uncertain times. And Lord, as we try to uh, connect with and face the problems that we, we're seeing around us in our society, we pray that you would draw out of us new things, that we would be willing to lay down our lives for those around us. And Lord, we pray that you would equip us to face and to fight the challenges we see in our world.